everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I want to talk to you about scum. So maybe something you notice, it's, I'm talking about surface scum, biofilm. Um, it's that kind of grotty, oily stuff you see on top of your fish tank sometimes. Um, it's not nice, so it's generally a good idea to get rid of it. There's no benefit to having a nice biofilm. No one ever says that. So it, it happens on a few of my tanks, it happens on my big discus tank here, it happens on a couple of my other tanks. It's generally, in my case, from overfeeding, things like that. If I'm feeding very protein-rich, oily foods, then that makes its way to the surface. If I'm feeding uh, heavily of any fish in the fish waste, or is producing a lot of waste, it makes its way to the surface. And it's not very nice. In its least harmful way, it's unsightly, but it can have some adverse effects for your aquarium. It can it hinder the gas exchange. So you know where you have the surface of the water, we tend to try and break that up so as the gas can exchange, the oxygen can get into the water, the carbon dioxide can get out of the water. It can stop that, it can stop light getting through, it can stop you, it can be annoying because you feed some flake food and it gets stuck in the oily film and that doesn't get through. So, something I've been dealing with for years, I've had fish where I've tried to breed fish and I've been overfeeding and things like that, so you get some biofilm. And generally what I've used is what I've called my all-purpose water polisher and it's something like this. I have made a few over the years um, and they all start with some kind of pump and the reason is uh, I switch between the pumps is because I drop them, break them, crash them, whatever. But what I do is I get a little pump like this. So this one is a little tiny USB, no, and this is a plug powered, but I have a USB powered one, um, where the impeller is here. And what I do is I glue on, or epoxy in this case, uh, a bottle cap. So I drill a hole in the bottle cap there, so this is where the water comes in. Um, and then this is where the water comes out again. But whatever pump you've got, you can get something to work for you. But I use a bottle cap like this, so as I can then screw on any old bottle that I like, he says, with an ability to screw it in. Um, so for a smaller tank, I can use a smaller bottle like this. This one I've got set up as an actual skimmer. So basically just cutting out some teeth there. I can position this in a tank so the water level's there. It sucks, the water comes in here, catches in here, I put some filter floss or something in that and then out there. So this is a really good, quick, efficient way of doing it. It's not nice, it's a bit unsightly. The things I like about this is, you can generally make this from whatever you want. I can make a bigger one, I can make a smaller one. Bottle caps are all the same size, so I can put a two litre bottle on here and use it under the water, just in here as a water polisher, so it'll just collect loads of gunk and crap. I can use it as a surface skinner, skinner, skimmer. Uh, and it'll work quite well that way. I often use it when I get things like duckweed going out of control. I'll just stick this in for half an hour and it'll collect most of the duckweed for me. Um, really good, just doesn't look very nice. So, I was quite excited when I got sent this from my good friends at Fluval, which is this little device, it's called the Fluval SK400. It's a surface skimmer from Fluval. It's essentially the same thing, but in a lot nicer packaging. Um, it's nice and black, which means it's unobtrusive. You can stick it at the back of your aquarium and you won't notice it quite so well. And it's a little bit more adjustable. <laughs> the main benefit for me is that this is unobtrusive. You can just have this in your fish tank. So if you have a fish tank, it says it's rated up to 400 litres. Um, you just have that in the back. Even if you don't run it all the time, it would be absolutely fine because it would just be out of the way and small. So in comparison, this is my small version. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger and bulkier and more horrible, basically. Um, but this will sit quite unobtrusively at the back of your aquarium. The way it works is, this is a key component here. This is your intake strainer part. And what it does is, you stick this in your aquarium and it automatically finds the level. Um, so if you have evaporation going on in your aquarium, it'll sit there and then as it evaporates it'll go down and down and down. You don't have to constantly adjust it with my DIY version, you very much do. Um, but just the thing that I like about it is meaning that you can actually just leave it in the aquarium at all times. Um, it's kind of universal in that it has this little gate here, so if you have shrimp and small fish you can close the gate and close that off to them. Um, if I was going to be critical in any way, the one thing that I might change to that, having used this for a little while, is it's great, yeah, you can, you can change this and nothing can get in there. But when you look at that side, 
anything can get in there. So it does seem a little bit of a strange choice, but still, I've not lost anything down there and it's not come to any harm because when you take that out, what you get in here is there's just some sponge in there to catch the crap, to catch the detritus. Um, so you just have to change that out every now and again. It has an adjustable switch here for the flow rate. And I really like the fact that it's a mechanical switch that controls the flow rate. I've seen some where they have like, it's potentiometers and things like that, and they always break. So that's what I use in my DIY version. Uh, my, I always prefer pumps that have mechanical flow rate adjustments rather than electrical. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. It handles up to 400 liters. Let's stick it in a grimy tank and see what it does. So if you can see here, we've got some of the, the oily, grimy spots in this tank. Um, the, the thing itself just sits there, bobbing up and down, until you actually turn the power on, like so. And then it goes down, immediately finds its level, and look at it, it just sucks that all in straight away. That's exactly what you wanted to do. It's taking in all that gunk, and it'll be gone in no time. Uh, another little feature you might notice is it kind of sits off the side of the tank. Um, so a lot of tanks will have some kind of bracing on the top. I think that's to allow you um, to get that little bit of space so it will work in multiple situations. But look at that, it's just taken it in perfectly. That's what you want. So that could sit in your tank at all times. Hopefully your tank's a little bit nicer than my tank, but I'll just for demo purposes, it looks like it's doing a fantastic job. So you can stick that at the back, out of the way. Ideally, if you have filters, so there's a sponge filter in there um, that I've just turned off for the moment just so that I can see how useful it was. You could direct the flow on the surface towards this. It would be a lot more efficient. Like I say, it catches or it handles tanks up to 400 litres. This one's about 200 and odd and it's already got through most of it. Um, are we there in no time? Other ways that you can do this, um, if you don't want to buy this, is what I've done in the past is like say my DIY version, but even if you don't want to do that, often just having a bubbler, um, an airstone will catch um, a lot of this stuff here, this grime here that you see is because there's bubbles in the airstone and that's the bubbles bursting on the surface make a lot of that grime stick to it. Obviously not enough, so you might have to have multiple bubblers. Um, you can use things like paper towels to pick it up. Again, these are all like messy, faffy options. This seems like a straightforward no-brainer. I've used my DIY version in situations like this, so I want floating plants on this one, but they get out of control sometimes. So if I didn't want quite as many floating plants here, I would scoop them out, but inevitably I would be left with a few floating on the surface. That's the ideal scenario uh, for a surface skimmer. So it will just pick them up without you having to do anything. And if anyone who's ever had duckweed knows that if you don't pretend you want it like what I do, um, unless you get rid of every single leaf, you've got duckweed forever. Um, so that might be the, the cure for duckweed if you want to get rid of it. But you know, like I say, I'm pretending I like this kind of stuff. So in contrast, this is the DIY version. Um, I mean, it's fine, but one of the drawbacks is it does, as a skimmer, require almost constant fiddling. As you can see there, it's, it's spitting out a few bubbles. That's because the water level has changed a little bit, not enough is getting through. So I just have to move it down a little bit. And that sorts that out. He says. Um, so that that will run fine and I often use this like I've done any maintenance if I've trimmed some plants or stirred up some gunk I'll stick that in to catch plant trimmings to catch mulm that I've kicked up into the surface stray bits of algae or whatever it is just to give the filters a bit of a break but versatility is one of the good things about this I can put a bigger bottle on there and I can move it further down using it as just a water polisher I can put a bigger bottle on it and fill it full of filter media and use it as a proper filter. It would do a job as that as well. It's just not aesthetically pleasing. So you can never say that, but you know, I've been using them for years. There's got to be a reason. 
So there you go, that was the Fluval SK400 surface skimmer and my DIY alternatives. I think surface skimming is something that it's, it's really important if you want your tank to look nice and be healthy. I've used surface skimmers in the past, whether it's my DIY version or some of the DIY options of bubblers to break the surface, paper towels to pick up the oily stuff, or sometimes uh, filters themselves come with a skimmer attachment, they can be quite useful. They all have their own drawbacks, so I'll, let, I'll leave you to make your own conclusions. The Fluval one, I think, is small enough and neat enough that it could be a permanent fixture in the aquarium, so if that's what you're after, for less than 20 quid, I think they are, it's probably the best option. Um, if you want something more versatile, more DIY, then I've shown you some of those options too. If you like that kind of thing, please consider clicking that subscribe button. About 50% of the people that watch this aren't subscribed. Um, thank you for all you who are, and if you want to join me on a Friday night, 9pm UK time, we do a live stream every Friday. Come along for some games, quizzes, generally aquatic themed chat, and say hello. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.